in the office by nine o'clock? Not now, Vaughan. I've had a shocking morning. All right, so you've been dumped again, have you? If by that you mean that two mature adults have decided to put a bit of space into their relationship, then yes, I've been bloody dumped. Oh, serves you right. I gave that girl the best three days of my week. <laughs> Do us a favour, mate. Pop that in with your laundry, will you? And tell Briony I like my boxers starched. That's the only way she's going to get them stiff. <laughs> Oi, forget it. Vaughan, I'm homeless. Yeah, no, it doesn't look too good for you this time, does it? Oh, I don't know. Tonight is a long way away, Vaughan. And out there somewhere is my new girlfriend and a brand new home. <laughs> How can you live like that? Just imagine, Vaughan. She's probably in the shower now, blissfully unaware that I'm about to lighten up her life. <laughs> Isn't fate a wonderful thing? Not for her, it's not. <laughs> I could have some privacy, Vaughan. I don't go hanging around your bedroom. Don't forget this, mate. Hey, why don't you get your next girlfriend to do it? Don't be stupid, Vaughan. It's one of my golden rules. Never give a girl laundry on the first date. <laughs> Besides, she'll be far too busy moving me in. Good morning, sir. No, it isn't. Oh, for God's sake, Ben, this is an office, not a laundrette. I'm sorry, sir, but this isn't mine. Is, is Bob in? He is, sir, but I, I think he's still getting dressed. Getting dressed? <laughs> Excuse me, sir. I, I had a bit of a domestic this morning. Don't talk to me about domestics, Bob. Not you too, sir. Yes, women. <laughs> Mrs. Marketing Director's driving me up the wall. She's become obsessed with hobbies. Signed up to every arts and crafts course in the bloody book. Oh, how very tedious for you, sir. The entire house is littered with dried bean and pasta collages. <laughs> I can't take a piss without tripping over a potter's wheel. <laughs> You know what they say, sir? Where there's a wheel, there's a wee. <laughs> well, I've tried to show an interest. I even agreed to model for her group in the life class. Well, it's very supportive of you, yes, sir. Yes, exactly. That's what I thought. But, well, it all ended in tears. I mean, there I was, sat stark bollock naked in front of a room full of people, and the old todger automatically assumed it was a Saturday night. <laughs> Started to work the room. <laughs> Kept nodding to the blonde at the back. <laughs> anyway, what's your tale of woe, Bob? Oh, it's nothing really, sir. I've just been trying to spin too many plates at the same time. Ah, you old rogue. <laughs> and they all came crashing down, made a hell of a mess, eh? Yeah, last night I lost the whole bloody dinner service, sir. <laughs> well, don't tell Mrs. Marketing Director that, or she'll want to make a bloody mosaic out of it. <laughs> Well, uh, I suppose things can only improve for us, sir. Well, I doubt it. I'll probably get home and find she's papier mache the damn dog. <laughs> oh, God, I'm bored out of my brain. Where the hell's Maggie, Julia? She's gone to lunch. Oh, yeah? Well, I suppose Vaughan will have to do. No, he's gone with her. Has he? Oh, did they leave a forwarding address? No. Julia, where did they go? It's a secret, I'm afraid. Ooh, a secret? <laughs> Julia, if you care anything for your career, <laughs> I strongly advise that you squeal like a piggy. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, little piggy. <laughs> oh, I'm beginning to wish I'd never agreed to go now. You'll enjoy it once you get there. All the other girls have been skiing before. I look like a complete pillock. I might as well break my leg now and be done with it. <laughs> well, well, well. If it isn't Orville and Dean. So you found us then. Now, don't go blaming Julia, Maggie. She withstood a surprising amount of pain for a small girl. We're not putting you off your lunch, shall we, Bob? No. Oh. There's never a bin around when you need one, is there? Oh, tell the light. Oh. <laughs> I don't like them when they're cooked, either. <laughs> so what's brought on this flurry of activity, then? If you must know, I'm trying to tone up. 
Brian, he keeps telling me I've got love handles. Well, you have one. They can be very handy. She can flip you over on your side and carry you up to bed. <laughs> so what's she in here for, then? GBA? GBA? Grievous bodily appearance for. I'm getting into shape for a skiing holiday. <laughs> well, you? Skiing? Yes, I'm going to Val d'Isere. Some of the girls from Legal have rented a chalet and they've asked me to go with them. Oh, what for? Cooking and cleaning? Skiing! <laughs> I see we have a full house. <laughs> Not joining in, Bob? Uh, no, I'm here as Vaughan and Maggie's personal trainer. Good man. Hold this for me, will you? Certainly, sir. I've come down here to work off some of my frustrations. <laughs> now then, time me. I'll do a minute, flat out. All right, sir. <laughs> On your marks. Get set. Go! <laughs> Maggie, uh? my Uncle Angus is off skiing at the minute. He'll give me some tips when he gets back. What, the city stockbroker? I'm looking after his penthouse while he's away. You want to see it? It's right on the Thames. Stunning views. Ah, yes, Vaughan. You can always judge a man by his shoes and his house. You don't find a winner living in a bedsit, do you? Very true, sir. You find a Maggie. <laughs> Man, you want to see the place. It's all open plan, you know. Design a kitchen. It's amazing. The spoils of success, eh, Bob? Well, it sounds a lot like my place, sir. Only, uh, smaller. <laughs> well, I should hope so. I'd expect nothing less from a top executive of mine. Well, we all have to live somewhere, sir. How's my time, Bob? Uh, five seconds to go, sir. Pedal through the pain. Burn it through, sir. Burn it. And... <laughs> stop! <sighs> <laughs> Feeling uh, any less tense now, sir? No, it's a complete waste of time. Yeah. I think I'll um, slip over to Soho and uh, grab myself a quick blow burger. <laughs> blow burger, sir? Yes, the old 50 pounder with relish. <laughs> Hold the gherkin, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Bats covered in mayo, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, carry on. Yes, sir, as you are. So you were living in a penthouse now, Bob. A doss house, more like. <laughs> For God's sake, Maggie, don't wear a white ski suit. You'll have a queue of French motorists trying to buy tyres off you. <laughs> oh, we're going to have to wean you off those, Maggie. They're 20 quid a pop in Val <laughs> you would be the winter sports expert, wouldn't you, Bob Slay? <laughs> Just remember, Maggie, knees bent, elbows out, with a huge mountain in front of you. Just imagine you're eating. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, Maggie. Is everything OK, sir? No, it bloody well isn't. I've just slammed the phone down on Mrs. Marketing Director, stupid cow. <laughs> oh, no, sir. I've had it with that woman. If it's not too personal a question, sir, what was the straw that finally broke the cow's back, the camel's back? <laughs> Turns out I mistook her prize-winning collage for my breakfast this morning. <laughs> Ate it with my prunes. Well, you'll be starting a new art movement any minute now, sir. <laughs> Bloody woman went berserk. Said I was impossible to live with. Me. That's ridiculous, sir. So, I've told her I never want to set foot in the house again. Well, what will you do now, sir? Well, I don't know. I suppose I'll have to find somewhere to stay. Well, shall I book you a hotel? Yes, I think perhaps you'd better, Maggie. It's all very depressing. Well, it goes without saying, so if I can be of any help at all, you only have to ask. Thank you, Bob. Okay. Uh, actually, Bob, uh, I just had a thought. Perhaps the marketing director would uh, like to stay with you <laughs> in your enormous penthouse. <laughs> well, it's a very generous offer, Bob. Well... Ordinarily, of course, sir, I would love to have you to stay, but the thing is, I, I, I've got a bit of an off-on relationship with my girlfriend at the moment, and I was rather hoping to win her over tonight. Actually, Bob, she did ring earlier, and she said that it's definitely off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm OK. I'm OK. I think you'll understand, sir, that I... I really do need to be alone tonight. Of course you do, Bob, and so do I. It's for the best, I think. So this way, we can be alone together. 
alone together, sir. Yes, so everything's worked out rather well, hasn't it? Well done, Maggie. Well, thank you, sir. Yes, well done, Maggie. I'll see you later, Bob. See you later, sir. Maggie, mm -hmm. would you mind popping into my office for a moment? I'd really like to be alone together. Actually, Bob, there is something I urgently need to do, sir. Mm -hmm. May I walk up with you? <laughs> I'm headed that way. Well, of course, Maggie. Just remember, Maggie, it ain't over till the fat lady skis. <laughs> Just admiring your coat, Vaughan. I've had it nearly three years. That's beauty. It's growing on me. <laughs> Could I uh, try it on? If you must. Thanks, mate. So, uh, where's this flat that you're looking after for your uncle, then? Hmm? Oh, uh, Pierhead Wharf. Oh, I used to know a girl who lived around there. Which building, exactly? It's the one right on the river with the uh, blue balconies. I know it. I know the one. Good deep pockets, aren't there, in this case? <laughs> and on the inside. <laughs> Any other pockets I should know about? <laughs> what is it with you in pockets all of a sudden? Oh! What a fantastic suit. <laughs> but this is nearly five years. Well, you're lucky, boy. It's finally come back into fashion. Could I, uh, try it on? Oh, I'm trying to Thanks. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Mmm. Mmm. I like it. Oh. It's got good deep pockets as well, hasn't it? Oh, All suits have pockets. Well, you would think so, wouldn't you? But on my designer suits, they tend to skimp on the storage space. <laughs> I couldn't try on the trousers, could I? <laughs> Come on, Vaughan, don't be a spoil sport. Bob, you might not have noticed, but I happen to be wearing them. I mean, take a minute. I want to want to see the whole ensemble. I'm sorry, Bob, I'm not running a clothes shop here. Well, you should do, Vaughan, because you're a bit of a fashion guru on the sly, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> what you doing? Get off me! Get off me, you idiot! Lunatic! Give me that jacket back. Sorry. Here it is. Oh, God! <laughs> so sorry. Oh, is it done? It's just a splash, Vaughan. A splash? Look out! Got a client meeting later. OK, OK, calm down. I'll take him to the express cleaners around the corner. You'll have him back in half an hour. You just, uh, you just stay there. I'm not going to go very far without any bloody trousers, am I? <laughs> Set of these, please. All oh, these are security keys. Well, I can't let you have copies without the paperwork. <sighs> Nothing's ever simple, is it? Look, I, I left the paperwork on the kitchen table. Come now and I'll bring it in tomorrow. No can do, mate. Look, I didn't want to have to tell you this, mate, but uh, these are my grandmother's house keys. We're taking her to a hospice in half an hour and I just wanted to give her a set as a symbol of hope. <laughs> Sorry, mate, it's against regulations. 40 quid. 50. <laughs> Done. Well, if it isn't the abominable snow woman. Your new lodger is waiting for you in your office. He's here, sir. Oh, there you are. Roomy. Hello, sir. I thought we might set off now if that suits you, Bob. Yeah, yeah, that sounds fine, sir. But have fun, you two. Thank you, Maggie. Bob, Bob. Wait a moment, sir. I'll catch you up. Right. Uh, what the bloody hell are my trousers? Oh, yes, about those. Uh, turns out I was a little bit late for the express service. But the good news is they'll be ready on Friday. Friday? <laughs> or Monday, at the latest. <laughs> I've got your ticket, and I found a set of keys in the pocket. That was lucky, wasn't it? Oh, but I've got half the European board waiting for me in the conference room. Relax. <laughs> You look 
very Bavarian. <laughs> Yodely. <laughs> I can't tell you how much I appreciate this, Bob. Oh, well, uh, my home is your home, sir. <laughs> <laughs> is there a problem? Oh, no, sir. No, sir. It's just that I'm usually half pissed by the time I get back home. <laughs> Place looks totally different when you're sober. <laughs> I'm sure my flat's around here somewhere. <laughs> you carefree bachelor boys. Ah, oh, here we are, sir. <laughs> Welcome to Shea Slay. <laughs> oh, impressive place you have here, Bob. Yes, isn't it, sir? <laughs> Please, make yourself at home. Thank you. Unusual taste in art you've got. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Is it one of those, um, Damien Hills? Uh, no, sir, it's uh, Jeff Hurst. <laughs> God. Is that who I think it is? <laughs> Bit of a mix up at the Photoshop, sir. I, uh, I asked for wallet size and they gave me wall size. <laughs> How very unfortunate. Mm. I've actually come to find it quite soothing, sir. They have that doleful look of two old farm dogs waiting to get shot. Hmm, <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> Please. Oh, <thank> you. <laughs> <clears throat> Please, uh, take seats. Oh, thank you. You're a little empty-handed for my stay, Bob. Oh, no worries, sir. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I like to go casual in the evening. You haven't got something I could slip into, have you? Of course I have, sir. Why don't you wait there? I'll go and uh, rustle something up for you. Oh, well, I shall come with you, Bob. No, really, stay here. No, it's this, Bob. <laughs> Here we are, sir. Sorry about the detour, but uh, as you can imagine, I'm extremely proud of the place and I wanted you to see everything. Well, of course, Bob. But you are something of a dark horse. There's not many people who can boast their own Methodist chapel. Oh, yes, sir. a lively assortment. You'll pick me something out, would you, Bob? Yes, sir. I trust you'll be joining me? No, I'm fine, as I am. I'm feeling good, Bob. I'm looking good, too, sir. <laughs> so, this is fun. I must say, if you have an excellent selection of wines, this must be, ooh, 70 quid a bottle? Wouldn't know, sir. I just leave it up to my wine merchant. <laughs> well, here's to the host. Mm, I'll drink to him. Cheers. <sighs> so, Bob, what are our plans for this evening? Going clubbing? Bag us some tossy? <laughs> well, sir, would, would you mind if we just just stayed in? Stayed in? Well, that seems a bit of a waste since we've got all this trendy gear on. <laughs> But um, I'm feeling a little bit tired and quite fancy an early night, sir. Oh, all right, we must. By the way, I've spotted your love rats, Bob. My what, sir? The gerbils. So friendly little fellows. Yes, yes, yes. And both over the age of consent, I hope. Uh, I expect so, sir, yes. 
Uh, you should get them a bigger wheel, though, Bob. You don't want them getting too fat. <laughs> now, what is it you youngsters are listening to nowadays, eh? Oh, uh, a bit of this, a bit of that, you know, all sorts. Good grief, your entire collection seems to consist of military marching bands. <laughs> oh, it's an sound now, sir. Really? Oh, yes. You can forget about garage and trance. This is what the kids are listening to. Oh, God, I am completely out of touch. <laughs> and tell me, Bob, do the girls like it? Oh, 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 do they like it? I mean, two bars of this, and you can march straight into their knickers, sir. <laughs> Quick march, eh, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> Explain everything, mate. Go to work. Trust me on this one. Awake, are you, Bob? Well, I've left the bathwater in for you, so you needn't bother to run another. <laughs> I think I've got most of the pubes off the soap. <laughs> what the hell is he doing here? Oh, Bob, good morning. Did you bring breakfast? <laughs> for the gerbils, I did. Ah, uh, Bob, about those. Um, I was feeling a bit restless in the night, and I got up to play with the little fellows, and I fear I trod on one, and... Um, <laughs> The other didn't survive either. <laughs> Not Mary and Joseph! Oh, I promise you I will replace every last rodent. You! And that raving lunatic will be out of here by midday. There will not be a trace that you have ever been here. Otherwise, I will ring the police and I'll have you both arrested for illegal entrance and trespass. Do I make myself clear? Yes, yes you do. Really, really clear. Good! Oh, is Vaughan gone? Yes, he, he just left, sir. Oh, quite right, too. Why the hell haven't you gone with him? Well, I thought it might be nice for us to walk into work together, sir. No, no, you go on ahead. I've got to wait here for Mrs. Marketing Director. She's agreed to drop all my clothes off here later this morning. Your clothes? Well, I can't impose on your wardrobe forever, can I, Bob? <laughs> Don't forget to leave your keys so I can lock up. <laughs> I want to apologize unreservedly. But I do need a small extension to the deadline. Forget it. Well, we're both innocent victims in this. I just had the worst night of my life. This is all Maggie's fault. If she well, had. Once in your life, you're going to have to take responsibility for your own actions. If you hadn't lied, none of this would have happened. Well, you make it sound so easy. It is easy. All you have to do is tell the MD the truth. Vaughan, he's the head of marketing. The truth means nothing to him. I am not prepared to enter into this debate any further. Now you have until lunchtime. Go. This isn't about those trousers, is it? Get out! <laughs> Everything all right, Bob? No, it isn't, sir. In fact, I've never seen Vaughan so upset. Could I have a quiet word with you in my office, please? Hmm. So, what seems to be the problem, Bob? Well, I'm afraid you staying with me last night has caused considerable unrest amongst the rank and file of the department, sir. Really? Oh, yes. You mustn't underestimate your popularity, sir. No, I suppose not. <laughs> and office politics being what they are, I think you really ought to stay with one of the others tonight. 
I know that Maggie is particularly keen. Well, I appreciate you marking my card, Bob. Obviously, I'll be devastated to see you go, sir, but I don't really see that we have an alternative. Well, you can forget that. I'm not about to slam it with the prowls. You're not, sir? No, I should be going home. Going home? Yes. Well, when Mrs. Marketing Director saw that fabulous flat of yours, she realised it wasn't each other that we were born with, but just life in the stodgy old suburbs. Oh, I see. Anyway, your place is still in one hell of a mess, I'm afraid, but, well, it's nothing that a team of industrial cleaners can't sort out in a couple of hours. Oh, absolutely, sir. And I suggest that you ring up Harrods, Bob, and get them to replenish all that yummy booze we knocked back. <laughs> you can whack the whole tab through on your expenses. Oh, how considerate of you, sir. It's a pity they don't still have their pet department, isn't it, eh? <laughs> No use trying to run away. What do you want? Well, I've been thinking, Maggie, why go all the way to the Alps to injure yourself when we could do it right here? If you want me to apologise, you'll be wasting your time. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Perhaps I was just a little bit hasty in my suggestion, huh? Yeah, perhaps you were, eh? I admit I probably should have checked with you first. Probably, yeah. Okay, Bob, I apologize. I, I, I can't hear you. No, I'm sorry, all right? I'm sorry. Still can't hear you, man. I'm really, really sorry. Thank you, Bob. I forgive you. <laughs> Next on nine, Larry Davis.